Hey, it's David from Dash Offroad, and we're here today to talk about ADR certification. Now, do you know if your bull bar is certified or not? I can tell you this one isn't, and I can tell you this one isn't. Also, this one isn't, and even this one isn't. So, ADR certification is uh, a tricky thing to understand, and I don't think the that. And I don't think the industry totally understands it, so hence why I'm doing this video for you. Looking into ADR certification is a rabbit hole. Once we started going down that track, it was um, uh, ring the uh, Department of Transport, which get referred back to the state motor reg, which then says you're gonna need to comply with whatever uh, the federal motor transport says again and it, you end up going backwards and forwards and it works out that there is some design rules for ADR compliance for full drive and to be specific it's ADR 42 section 11 if you want to go and look that up uh, for some bedtime reading and so there is a section that tells you what you need to have done for ADR however there is nowhere to get it certified so um, at a federal level and the Department of Transport, that's the best place where it could be done, except uh, they don't have any regulatory power or legislative, legislative power to actually certify for ADR for aftermarket ball bars. Basically, if you've got an aftermarket ball bar on your car, it's I'm 99% sure that it is not ADR certified. Why? Because you can't. The, there is no certification. You will not see an ADR certification number on any bull bar out there in the market that I know of. If I'm wrong, please put it in the comments below and tell me. So basically then um, the Department of Transport say it has to be covered at state level. And in, for example, the New South Wales um, documents and literature, it says that you know, there must be, there's an outline for what uh, bar tolerances, offsets are acceptable, unacceptable corners and edges, shapes, that sort of thing. And every ball bar on the market actually follows these these rules. There's none that don't. Um, it's just the way that this sort of, uh, the angles are, there's no sharp edges, that sort of thing. Uh, so they're all compliant with ADR, but they are not certified as ADR. So you may see someone saying that they are complied to ADR um, and stating a clause, maybe ADR AUNZ, which they are compliant, but they're not certified because you can't actually get certified. So this came about because I've um, been researching ADR Bulba certification for a, a side project and um, uh, we thought that you had to crash a bar to see if it was, then could be certified. Uh, it, it doesn't really work like that. Um, you know, some there is some companies out there that do do destructive testing on their products, which is fantastic. The more of that around, the better. But that's not what you need to do to meet the standard. Um, you might say, well, how are you allowed to drive around on the road without ADR certificate? Uh, Nissan, for example. Yes, they crash test their cars and um, they come to Australia with their engineer reports and say this is how it would survive in the case of a, tra uh, a crash. Uh, if I look at McLaren for example, you know, million dollar plus cars, all the exotic cars out there, they are not gonna crash one of their cars because they're gonna sell 15 in Australia over the next 10 years. So what they do is they write to Australia and when it comes to registration, they say they meet all the standards of ADR and comply but they haven't actually crash tested one. So you don't have to crash uh, a bar to uh, allow it to be in Australia on the roads, it just has to be uh, meet all of the standards, which you know, all the ball bars do. Now the compliance of ADR, who do you think that falls on? It's not the manufacturer, believe it or not, it's the installer, so whoever fits the bar to a vehicle it's up to them to make sure that it complies with the state, not federal, but state um, motor reg or uh, um, legislation that they have got at a state level. And the easiest thing to do is, once the bar is fitted, is to take it into motor reg and say, is this 
uh, um, does this comply with all the state and uh, territory laws? There, there could be a loophole in this. So, you know, if you look at how GVM upgrades are done on, on land cruisers before uh, first registration, you can get it um, upgraded to the gross axle mass opposed to the manufacturer's GVM as long as you do it before the GVM and uh, before um, it gets registered. Now, the reason why you can get away with that is because uh, Toyota will, uh, as they sell the car, they register for a component registration number and that comes underneath Toyota then. So when they first register it and put it out into the market, Toyota wears that. And the same would go for a bull bar. If you had a bull bar fitted, pre-delivery, uh, Toyota or Nissan being the fitter, they would take on the ADR responsibility for fitting that um, before first registration and they could apply for a component registration number and that would give you an actual ADR number for it. But that's really the only way that you could get around this. And, and you see this done for mine sites and, and that sort of thing. Basically, every single aftermarket bull bar is not certified. It complies, but it's not certified with ADR ruling. You might think uh, all these cars running around without it. If, if you were uh, serious about this and you wanted to be totally covered, what you could ask from your bull bar manufacturer or installer is a letter from the manufacturer that states that this bull bar is made for the specific fitment of this car then um, and, and complies with ADR uh, standards at the state level and that would be that would cover you very well. I'm not a lawyer, I don't work for the Department of Transport but I'm saying that, that that would put you in good stead and to have documentation. So this was just a quick little video to get a better understanding uh, about making your car legal on the road in whatever state or territory you live in. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe and I'll see you next week.